meditation. It is mental training to slow down racing thoughts, let go of negativity and calm both your mind and body. It is a prehistoric practice involving myriads of techniques. Mindful meditation in particular became quite popular in recent years. All of us know at least one friend who will swear by the benefits of meditation and will pitch it as a magic cure for all our problems. Let it be work stress or trouble falling asleep. I have been personally told a simple solution. Just breathe. And then there are some skeptics who would question everything and anything about meditation. What is meditation? Does it even work? Is this ancient practice any relevant to these modern times? especially in these covid times when we need inner peace more than ever hi i'm nan mure this is neuroscience of everything in this episode we will explore what really happens in our brains when we meditate while we do so you sit tight or perhaps sit relax and breathe In India, the COVID-19 lockdown was sudden, severe and absolute. Desh aaj ek mahatvapurna nirnay karne ja raha hai. Aaj raat 12 baje se sampurna desh mein sampurna lockdown hone ja raha hai. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi plunged 1.3 billion people into confinement. J'ai décidé qu'il fallait retrouver à partir de vendredi le confinement qui a stoppé le virus. A quarter of the world's population is now living under some form of lockdown due to coronavirus. More than 3 billion people in almost 70 countries and territories have been asked to stay at home. It has been more than a year since the COVID pandemic had changed our lives in unimaginable ways. the way we worked to the way we socialized the nature of this unprecedented challenge forced more than half of the world's population to abandon their daily routine and stay home this disruption of routine came at hefty cost health crises lockdowns financial uncertainties political instabilities stretched our mental well-being to the limits It is too early to say as data are still coming in but if we go by early trends it does look like covid pandemic has taken its toll on mental health It's currently 8 a.m. the weather outside is cold dark gray and miserable which is a reflection of my mood today to be honest I have no other plans today and it's going to be a just like every other day a day spent alone I feel so rough today but I have I have this like assignment It's been a long time and day staring at a screen all day working and not being able to meet friends and socialize with people on the weekend as a university student has it's definitely weird and has definitely taken its toll on me. Covid related anxieties plagued almost all of us at one point or other during these lockdowns but the vulnerable ones are hit particularly hard. quite bad anxiety that's really really difficult for me um already struggling WHO came up with a support campaign on how to stay healthy at home with an app tagline be kind to your mind moreover many government and private organizations came up with guided meditation sessions for their employees who are working hard from their homes Our collaborator Dr. Alexandra Hodor spoke to an experienced meditator Ms. Asha about her experience with COVID lockdowns and meditation. Asha works as a business analyst in a multinational IT firm. COVID isolation or this yeah like being uh, living 
alone and being isolated at home, did it have any impact on you or still has? And uh, if yes, did meditation somehow help you to cope with this in particular? So being honest, um, during this past year with COVID, I really felt um, lonely. So I, I have my family and friends, but they were, you know, apart and you could you could talk over phone, but you could you could feel isolated from everything. And I think, you know, winter time is not the best time for me as well, because there is a little sun and, you know, there are long, dark evenings that you sit alone at home. So I wouldn't say that um, this formal meditation was the first thought for me to find some consolation for that and, and get uh, more peaceful. But I think the habits I have from my meditation to translate into my, uh, well, those benefits to translate into my like daily routine and daily life, that helped me a lot. Many people adopted meditation especially through meditation apps. The number of downloads for the top 100 guided meditation apps almost tripled during COVID times, and their revenues swole from just over half a billion to a whooping 1.5 billion. Is our yearning for a quick fix contributing to the race of selling inner peace? Where and when did meditation practice start? And how was it originally done? In the next segment, we will explore the origin story of meditation and its relevance to our times. The first documented evidence for meditation comes from arts found in the Indian subcontinent, dating to 5000 to 3500 BCE showing people seated in meditative posture with half-closed eyes. Around the 6th to 5th centuries BC, other forms of meditations develop in Taoist China and Buddhist India. However, many core meditative concepts in early Buddhism seems derived from Hinduism and find their first mentions in Vedas. Several meditation practices evolved and traveled to the Western world via so-called Silk Road Transmission of Buddhism. The Sanskrit word for meditation, dhyana, is rarely used these days. It translates as a state of uninterrupted and higher contemplation. The word meditation comes from the Latin word meditari, which means to reflect on, to study and to practice, roughly encompassing the meaning of dhyana. For most of history, meditation at its core remained a spiritual exercise and religious practice as a way to remove ignorance and to acquire knowledge and oneness with the Absolute. Not only practiced in Hinduism and derived religions, but also in Christianity. Owing to its monastic traditions, vocal prayers and certain meditative practices are referred to as Christian meditation, which involves prayers in which structured attempt is made to become aware of and reflect upon the revelations of God. Buddhist meditative practices later evolved to focus more on understanding their mind and attain samatha, serenity and vipassana, insight. Two paramount mental qualities Buddha himself possessed and advocated his disciples. Our modern guided meditation practices focus mostly on attaining these two things. Despite its universal appeal and secular nature, meditation always finds its skeptics picking up on its religious connotation. As neuroscientists, we subject the meditative practices to the rigor of scientific rationality and systematically analyze what current neuroscience research says about meditation and its benefit in our next segment. What happens in our brain when we meditate? 
Does it change something in our brain structure and possibly function? Wouldn't it be amazing to be able to peep into the brains of people while they meditate? And maybe compare novice meditators with experienced practitioner. Thanks to neuroimaging methods such as fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, many research groups carried out such cross-sectional studies where they took a snapshot of novice and experienced meditators. Indeed, morphometric analysis revealed structural differences. Experienced practitioners who had more than 10,000 hours of practice had increased cortical thickness in various brain regions, most of them associated with attention, learning, and emotional processing, such as the right anterior insula, anterior cingulate cortex, medial prefrontal cortex, and amygdala. Moreover, experienced meditators had higher gray matter density. What does it mean? If one were to oversimplify it, higher gray matter density is linked with higher intelligence, measured as IQ, possibly due to efficient information processing. Of course, these studies are correlational and the lack of standardized meditation paradigm make it difficult to back all the claims concretely. However, the biggest criticism for these studies was that the brain structural changes observed in expert meditators could be simply because of the training-induced effect and not only because of meditation itself. To address this, in recent years, many longitudinal studies were carried out, where the same participants or group of participants were studied at different time points. Most of these studies confirm the effect of meditation on brain structures. Besides, they observed a few new effects. For example, as we age, our brain structures tend to decrease in size, called atrophy, and so do our cognitive capacities. However, meditation lowered age-related atrophy in study participants, particularly in a structure called the hippocampus, which is implicated in learning and memory storage. Meditation not only causes a change in brain structure, but some neurophysiology studies using EEG reported increased activity in medial prefrontal cortex during meditation. This leads to the next logical question. Does meditation have a similar effect on people suffering from neurological conditions? There are a few studies carried out in this domain and common findings suggest beneficial effect of meditation in pain management, anxiety and overall stress reduction self-reported as well as stress biomarkers. The scientific community remains cautious while reporting the effect of meditation on brain, and rightly so, considering the over-enthusiastic reporting by media. A leading researcher in the field and author of the book Neuroscience of Mindfulness Meditation, Professor Tang, reviewed research of over two decades in his highly cited article. He testifies that current research to support the claim that mindfulness meditation exerts beneficial effect on physical and mental health and improves cognitive performances in test subjects. However, some of these studies used in the meta-analysis suffer from sample size limitations and need to be repeated. There is a rational and rather healthy skepticism reported in an article published in Perspectives on Psychological Sciences Authors express their concern, and I quote, Dependable scientific evidence has lagged worrisomely behind the rapid and widespread adoption of mindfulness and meditation for pursuing an array of mental and physical wellness goals. They call for more research in this area to consolidate the findings. Largely speaking, majority of studies support the beneficial effect of meditation. Does that mean now doctors can prescribe meditation to patients, just like a pill of Prozac? Not yet. However, there are some mindfulness-based programs which are successfully used in some patients. In particular, mindfulness-based stress reduction or MBSR and mindfulness-based cognitive therapy MBCT for people with chronic health problems 
or psychological and emotional stress have had some success. We spoke to an experienced meditation teacher and psychology counselor at Geneva Meditation Center, Ms. Bianca King, who offers such mindfulness-based stress reduction courses. We asked her about her work, particularly in context of COVID times. Hello, Bianca. Hi, Nan. My work is with groups of people as well as individuals, people who are interested in trying mindfulness meditation to help them uh, deal with some of the difficulties that we might have in life uh, and how to resource ourselves better to find some emotional balance uh, because it's so normal to have ups and downs but how do we ride those waves uh, so I also work with uh, the mindfulness-based stress reduction course uh, the group course and some people like to have it one-to-one -one as well and I also uh, was working with groups of people who are experiencing cancer uh, and needing support along those lines as well I guess one of the nicest things about mindfulness is that it not only helps us through difficult times, but it helps us to be more present when things are really going well and we want to experience some gratitude. Uh, and this is probably one of my favorite things about mindfulness because the more that we lean into the gratitude aspect and just the joyful moments, uh, it's a nice way to start our day. It's a nice way to color also some of the difficult things that happen. Did meditation help some vulnerable people in these stressful times? So absolutely, it's been quite a strange experience, this whole COVID, because we're indoors most of the time, we're separated from people physically, uh, from being able to touch them, but also just being in a vicinity of somebody like we would normally at work. So this is generally okay for people who are introverts um, and not always though, but also for extroverts, this is really quite a difficult time. I've had companies contacting me in particular because of this reason. And so what we're finding is that there are ways to connect and mindfulness can really help that, especially with deep listening and how we can connect over Zoom, for instance, uh, connect over the phone because people are getting a little bit tired of being on screens all the time. So it's been really wonderful to work with meditation, mindfulness in a way that we can uh, be with our screens and other people as well uh, in different ways. So the vulnerable people uh, are often the people who are feeling really isolated from other people or just from their lives in general. I guess we're more than one year past from the original lockdown now and it was all new at the beginning but it does feel a little bit like Groundhog Day. So people who were coping well at the beginning uh, are also not necessarily coping well now. So the meditation has really helped people to find inner resources. More importantly, can you tell our audience do's and don'ts of meditation the do's and don'ts of mindfulness meditation are i would say don't worry about trying to be perfect or to get it right meditation is really about experiencing ourselves as human beings and that's all the ups and downs that we experience all the emotions how can we sit with that experience or walk with it or communicate with that experience uh, of being really fully human. Uh, you know, do meditate uh, in nature, go out and walk in nature, do meditate uh, sitting on your chair, do meditate when you're speaking with other people, which really just means having a, a deep listening to what's going on inside as well as what's happening for the other person. It is too early to say that meditation is a quick fix remedy for all our lockdown and COVID related anxieties. But a few studies on preprint server suggest so. As Ms. King said, all meditation techniques are not for everyone. But one needs to find the technique which works best for them. And it is highly advisable to consult a meditation teacher if you think you need one.
to conclude in the meditation has beneficial health effects in normal healthy individuals as well as people with neurological conditions one needs to find what works for themselves personally i find daily meditation as a special me time to listen to myself contemplate and reflect and very often i find myself a bit calmer and mindful than i started with i usually track my heart rate while meditating and i almost always found that my baseline heart rate is slower while meditating the mind is a complex phenomenon resulting out of our complex neurobiologies and taming the mind and thoughts is a herculean task meditation could be one of the tools to do so i would like to leave you with this analogy which in my opinion comes closest to explain it the mind is like lake water and thoughts are ripples in it agitated water never reflects the beauty around it or allow us to see its depth like calm water it takes a calm mind to reflect the world around us and explore the depths of our own minds as po from the movie kung fu panda would say all we need is inner peace let's go get it i would like to thank our guests miss bianca king miss asha and dr alexandra hodor for sharing their insights miss ivet jonjoshi for her tasteful music selections and help with audio setup dr ruhi deshmukh for her contribution towards script writing and editing a special thank to the yellow music for meditative flute tracks which were used in this episode most importantly thank you to our listeners your support motivates us to keep going if you think a friend would enjoy this episode do not forget to share please do subscribe on itunes apple podcast spotify or wherever you get your podcast in the next episode we talk about the neuroscience of procrastination i mean i have been thinking of doing this episode for quite a while so without any procrastination here it comes meanwhile Take care, stay safe and stay tuned. This is Nand Mure and you are listening to Neuroscience of Everything.